I uh, have an interest in education. And I find that if my students, some of whom are here today, so I'm really happy to see their faces. I find that if my students take an interest in something, then they work really hard to learn that thing. Allow me to explain. Um, I used to be a teacher at this very institution. I learned a lot from this place. Amongst the things that I learned, one thing that I observed really keenly is that teachers are busy, incredibly busy. So Diwali celebrations are coming up, call the teachers. An important guest is visiting our school, bulalo teachers come. Annual day or assembly has to be organized, call the teachers, I can keep going, you understand. Where are my TEDx teacher superstars who helped organize this event? How about a round of applause for them? So you know what I'm saying, as Javed Akhtar Saab said, uh, teachers are busy. And what happens when teachers are so incredibly busy in non-teaching related tasks is that there is very little time left for planning. In my observation, there was about 30 minutes to plan for a week's worth of instruction. That's about 30 minutes on a Saturday for three hours of classroom teaching time. Clearly, that is not enough. Um, while teachers are so busy, what happens is that they rely on textbooks. Uh, and that would be fine, except that this is where I need your love and support to say the things that I know are true, but are also incredibly harsh. Yeah? The textbooks that we as teachers rely on are incredibly boring. They are horrible. They are mediocre. Um, allow me to give you some examples. Yeah? I'm here not just talking about the typos or the spelling mistakes that are littered across these documents, which I would say are perhaps some of the easiest mistakes that we can fix in those things, right? I am talking about deep structural design challenges here. Uh, text, these are textbooks that are not propelling student interest, not illuminating their questions, not raising their curiosity. Here are a couple of examples. Um, this is the first chapter from the class six uh, science textbook. Yes, can I move back a little? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is chapter seven from the class six science textbook. Title is Getting to Know Plants. Now this is a 14 page excruciating detail on <laughs> learning the parts of the plants. Are you ready? I am a teacher. I will quiz you after this. Pay attention, yeah? Reticulate venation, stigma, style, pistil, lamina, petiole, stamen, Anther, I can keep going. This is barely half the list. Now don't get me wrong. I am not saying that the students should not know the parts of the plant. Of course that's what not, uh, I'm not saying that, right? What I am saying instead is that if all we focus on in that 14 page excruciating detail is an encouragement to our students to memorize the parts of the plant, then important ideas, important questions that are authentic and organic to the students will get left behind in the class period. Questions like the one Devesh, a 12 year old boy asked me, which is, do bananas have seeds? Another question that was presented to me was, why do plants make flowers? Which then led to a conversation uh, that an apple was once a flower, which when I learned, by the way, blew my mind. Uh, another piece of evidence. This is uh, chapter four in the class seventh science textbook. Uh, the title is a little hard to read, but I think it is sorting materials into groups. The learning objective here, by the way, I'm going to do a lot of this, so let's just get used to it, yeah? Um, the learning objective here is some objects are soluble in water and others are not soluble in water. No big deal, important idea for the students to learn. When I was finished teaching this chapter inside my classroom, uh, one of my students came to me and said, Sir, teen saal se bar bar yehi cheez padha rahe ho. You're teaching us this from the last three years, he said, right? And sure enough, you go look in the textbooks from previous year and the year, year before that. This learning objective with the same level of complexity exists in all of those textbooks, right? Again, what I'm saying is not that students should not know about solubility. Of course they should. But if we keep on doing mindless repetition again and again, year after year, then what is going to happen is that authentic questions that students have about solubility will get left behind. Questions like, 
Water is not soluble in oil, we know that. Why are oil spills in oceans so hard to clean? Okay. If you think I'm harping way too much upon science, let's talk about mathematics. Yeah? Uh, this is a chapter titled Simple Equations uh, in a Mathematics Textbook. And um, quick primer here, these are equations that just have an equal to sign in the middle, right? They have a left hand side and a right hand side. Things are balanced, equal to sign in the middle, right? Um, the most interesting part of this chapter for me and my students was this section which said, ah, practical situations, right? Where are we going to use simple equations in practical situations? Let's talk about it. The first question underneath that heading is sum of three times a number is 11 is 32. Find that number. I don't know about you, but to me and my students, that doesn't look like a practical situation. <laughs> right? What is a practical, authentic situation to a child or a student is how many marks do I need to get in my final exam so I can get 90% for the whole year? <laughs> That's an organic calculation my kids do all the time. So you take that word problem, which is authentic and organic and interesting, dare I say, and convert that to math, which is what this thing is prescribing, and you get an answer to it, right? What this is, is it's, it's the middle. It, the, the context for this math is missing. This is like going to a Hindi movie made by Shah Rukh Khan and starting at intermission. That is not interesting. It's at best frustrating. All right, let's keep going. I'm not done here. Uh, this last piece of evidence that I will present to you is uh, from a social studies textbook, right? But um, you can find it pervasive throughout all textbooks, all subjects. Uh, I stake my reputation on it, right? What this is, is just an exercise section at the end of every chapter, the assessment that we present our students. And for the sake of clarity, what I'll do is in continuity, I'll just go back to the getting to know plants chapter, where you will find questions that are mostly multiple choice in nature, which are encouraging the student to remember what we had previously taught them in the chapter. Questions like, what plant leaves have reticulate venation, right? You know, you can tell a lot about what the learning objective of the textbook was just by looking at the assessment, all right? This assessment is not propelling student curiosity. This assessment is not propelling student interest. This assessment is not addressing their authentic questions. What this is doing is a very clean and simple message. This is delivering a clean and simple message, rather I should say, that hey, listen, your formative and summative assessments are coming. We know that, you know this, right? Make sure you know the answers to these questions. And if you do, we are okay, <laughs> all right? You know that famous villain that we all love to criticize in the education circles called rote learning, right? Hindi mein bolte hai, ratta marna ki cheez iska. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the assessment sections at the end of each one of these chapters, right? All right, so I hope I've given you a little window into the lives of students and teachers and their relationship with the textbooks uh, and how some of these textbooks are just, well, I mean, uh, the soft euphemism for it is they're not good, but I'll stand here and tell you the truth today. They're horrible. They're somewhere in between mediocre and boring. Um, and because teachers are so busy in non-teaching related tasks, what they have to do is rely on these textbooks. So what is in the textbook gets taught, yeah? That's a problem. So a few years ago, we decided to do something about this and uh, we started an organization that would uh, propel student interest in learning by addressing some of their authentic questions. Allow me to give you some examples, yeah? This is a chapter in the class seven a uh, maths textbook which is called Comparing Quantities. The main idea here, however, is ratios, right? Uh, one way I would argue to make ratios interesting to our students is to show them a conversation with Shankarji, right? Shankarji lives in a village in Rajasthan and if you ask people in the know, they will tell you that he is the man who is pivotal behind the passage of the Right to Information Act in our country. So when I went and uh, spoke to him and recorded that conversation on camera, he basically connected for me ratios and corruption. I didn't understand, so I asked him to explain it to me and he said, Dekho beta, jab aap building banate ho, to building mein eento ke beech mein cement ka aur rete ka mixture lagta hai, right? So there is a mixture of cement and sand that we use to build the mortar, which is one part cement, eight parts sand. 
Now because the cement is expensive, what many of the contractors do is they will mess up with this ratio. It will go from 1 is to 8 to 12 to 16 to 20, right? And so what happens when we build buildings in our country with a messed up cement sand ratio? Well, here's what he said. और आप उसमें से करप्शन करना चाह रहे हो, तो आप क्या करते हो कि उस अनुपात को बिगाड़ देते हो? वो रेशो बिगाड़ देते हो? बिगाड़ देते हो। एक एक बारा, एक सोला, एक बीस। मतलब क्या कि एक भाग लिया हमने सीमेंट का? हाँ, और बीस भाग आपने रेत का डाल दिया। हाँ, तो बिल्डिंग तो ठीक नहीं बनेगी। बिल्डिंग नहीं बनेगी वैसी। हाँ। डांचा तो बन जाएगा, दिखेगा, लेकिन वो तो गिरने लायक हो जाएगा। जैसे कि? जैसे पानी की टंकी बनेगी तो उसमें पानी थोड़ी रुकेगा यार। ऐसा देखा आपने? कई जगह। पूरी पंचायतों में पानी की टंकी जिस दिन से बनी है ना आज तक उसमें पानी नहीं डाला है जो उनको मालूम है कि पानी डालते ही गिरेगा ढांचा बना हुआ है खंबे खड़े हैं ऊपर वाला पूरा सब कुछ है लेकिन पानी डालते ही वो गिरेगी क्योंकि उसमें सीमेंट भागा डाला एक भाग और रेत डाली बीस भाग रेत ज्यादा सीमेंट कम डाली क्योंकि सीमेंट महंगी है आपको करप्शन करना है तो कौन सी चीज में से खाओगे आप आपने सर स्वयं देखी है पानी की टंकी जिसमें आज भी खड़ी है <laughs> आप मेरे साथ गांव में चलोगे आज भी खड़ी है उनमें आज भी पानी नहीं है आज भी वो पिलर पे खड़ी टंकिया पड़ी है शो पीस है शो पीस है अच्छा। आज भी दिखता है दिस इज चैप्टर फोर फ्रॉम द जियोग्राफी टेक्सट बुक विच इंट्रोड्यूस स्टूडेंट टू दईडिया ऑफ एयर एंड इट्स कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग प्रेशर ना वन वे आई वुड आर्ग्यू टू मेक दिस इंटरेस्टिंग टू द स्टूडेंट सो दे पे मोर अटेंशन well, interested in the subject, is to show them an experiment. Take an empty glass, take a piece of paper, which is a little bit thicker than your notebook ka kagas, uh, fill the glass up with water, and place the paper on top of the glass, and then invert the whole apparatus, and let your bottom hand go, and watch your students lean forward and say, how did you do that? And that leads to a conversation on air pressure, and air pressure in real life, which is all about filling your cycle tires up with air, and then more questions from students. Cycle में हवा कितनी होनी चाहिए? Tire में हवा को नापते कैसे हैं? Tube में अगर हम बहुत ज़्यादा हवा भर देंगे, तो क्या होगा? Tire में हवा अंदर कैसे रहती है? Let's keep going. Give you a few more examples of this. Uh, this is chapter one from the grade six science textbook. Where does food come from? One way to learn about where food is coming to our dinner plates from is to read this chapter. One way I would argue to make this more interesting is to actually take a journey. Take a journey from your local fruit and vegetable seller to go to then the local sabji mandi and then from there to go all the way to the farm and talk to an actual farmer who's been living this chapter for 30 years. क्या नाम है आपका नाम तो गम हिसाब तो शिवशंकर है शिवशंकर क्या बुलाते हैं लोग आपको शिवली शिवली <laughs> मतलब छोटा शॉर्ट में कर दिया उसको अच्छा अपने खेत में उगाते क्या हमारे यहाँ ज्यादातर एक की पैदा हो है गेहूँ भी हो है सरसों भी हो है फसल तो सभी हो जा पर ज्यादातर जो है एक की और चावल की पैदा अच्छा इज फ्रॉम चैप्टर इलेवन विच इज टाइटल लाइट एंड शेडो uh, and one way to make this interesting is to ask the students, hey, what are your questions about this chapter that you are interested in? And that will yield questions like, can shadows be colorful? Do they necessarily have to be black? And that leads to some silliness. Can you guess what is odd about this scene? Well, other than my crazy dancing, you may have noticed that the shadow is not black, but instead, it's colorful. What's going on here? All right, I'll leave you with one last example, right, which is from chapter 11 of the science textbook, which is all about liver and kidney. One way I would argue to propel student interest in that particular topic is to use things they already find interesting. Things like uh, TV advertisements, jingles, and poems. So this is a one minute long video I'll play it in its entirety. इस कहानी में एक विलन है जिसने शोर बहुत ज़्यादा मचाया है नाम इसका अमोनिया और हाईवे एन एच थ्री पर इसने अपना झंडा फहराया है कहानी की शुरुआत होती है खाने से और बदन की बदबू दूर होती है फॉग के लगाने से प्रोटीन युक्त मज़ेदार दाल हमने खाई उससे खूब एनर्जी पाई साथ में मसल भी बनाई 
लेकिन प्रोटीन का एक बाय प्रोडक्ट अमोनिया होता है जिसकी बॉडी में ये बहुत ज़्यादा हो जाए वो जान को हाथ से धोता है हमें चाहिए एक हीरो इरादे हमारे बहुत ही सच्चे हैं जो इस हीरो के कपड़े गंदे हो जाएं तो ये बोले कि दाग अच्छे हैं एक नहीं हीरो तो अपने दो हैं फिल्म शोले के जय और वीरू से यो है ये पास हो तो किसी को ना हो कोई फियर क्योंकि इन दोनों को ही मिला है स्टूडेंट ऑफ द ईयर अपने पहले हीरो का नाम है लिवर देख के इसको अमोनिया करता है शिवर लिवर अमोनिया को यूरिया में तब्दील करता है दिन रात हमारे लिए काम करे तभी लिवर का जी भरता है लेकिन यूरिया भी हमारी बॉडी के लिए नुकसानदायक है अमोनिया के बाद ये एक नया खलनायक है फिक्र मत करें दोस्तों अब मैदान किडनी ने संभाला है ये ऑर्गन सही से चले तो लाइफ जिंगा लाला है कैंट आर ओ प्यूरीफायर की तरह किडनी ब्लड को छानती है खून में घुले यूरिया को अलग करके ही ये मानती है अलग हुए यूरिया का अब लेंगे हम हिसाब निकालेंगे इसको बॉडी से बनाकर इसको पेशाब यू से शुरू होने वाले शब्दों का चलेगा जोर अब पूरे ज़माने में यूरिटर यूरिनरी ब्लैडर यूरिथ्रा के रास्ते यूरिन निकलेगा गुसल खाने में तो हुई लिवर और किडनी की जीत सब लोग जाओ अब अपने घर जी इस स्टोरी को सुन हम सभी बोले वट एन आइडिया सर जी um so i hope i've given you a little window into the lives of students and teachers as they interact with the textbooks which are horrible let me say it again uh and uh an attempt to do something about that situation where we can perhaps propel student interest in learning uh we are not the only ones on this journey however there are other people who are uh fellow travelers on this journey with us and i want to introduce their work to you also but before i do i also want to do a quick reflection on the work that we've been doing for the past few years if there were a scale with meek on one end and bold on the other end meek and bold educational interventions that propel student interest that surface their authentic organic questions i'd say that the work that we've done is somewhere to the middle of the left that begs the question what is to the right what is a bold educational intervention that propels student interest and the answer to that question is embedded in another question which is what is good pedagogy what is good teaching and learning now this is the part of the presentation which when i was rehearsing yesterday evening in front of my mother even though she loves me she had to stifle a yawn so it gets a little dense stay with me i will walk you through it ready okay what is good pedagogy what is good teaching and learning there are many answers available from freire's problem posing model to seymour papert's constructionism to mitch rusnick's four p's of learning these are convoluted phrases i understand but here's the good news the good news is there is a lot in common between these three theories of learning so knowing something about any one of them is going to go a long way in learning something about all of them today we are only going to focus on mitch rusnick's four p's of learning in fact we are only going to focus on two of those p's which are projects and passion all mitch is trying to say all he is trying to say is let students make projects and things they are passionate about let me give you an example if we were to teach variables to our students many of which are sitting here how do we teach them variables in a traditional classroom well we teach it to them when it appears in the textbook and we deliver that information to them that's one way that we are doing it right now i contend that's boring that's not interesting to the child the other way mitch is suggesting is that you let students make projects and things they are passionate about so say a student is passionate about making video games let's say so you give her the opportunity to make those video games and very soon while she is making those games she is going to come across the idea of adding either a timer or a score to that video game and the teacher or the facilitator can then introduce the idea of variables to the student at that point let students make projects in things they are passionate about there are already schools all over the world who are doing this well the one that i visited was in amdabad riverside school uh, where students are making projects and things that they are interested in and there's another school called dsil in bangkok thailand where they reserve as much as 50% of the student time 50% to let them make projects in things that they are passionate about now if what i have said to you today is even somewhat convincing and you want to try out this idea i know 50% of the students time from his or her time table is going to be an almost impossible task so i will leave you with an actionable idea if you choose to implement it right take four class periods you can't do four take two take two consecutive class periods on a friday before the lunch break and let students make projects that they are 
passionate about. And because reporting is important in our school system, add a line item in the report card and communicate to the parents how the students are doing during that time through some rubric based analysis. So in the end, I will say what I started with. I have an interest in education. I find that if my students take an interest in something, they work really hard to learn it. Over the past several years, we've tried to design content that propels student interest, that illuminates their authentic questions. But if I'm being truly reflective about how to make education interesting, perhaps the best question we can ask is, what are the students already interested in? I invite you to do the same. Thank you.